This week on the Push All Those Podcast, we talk Easter eggs, protein bars, ten your pectoral muscles putting on too many steroids, and the body part split, and single limb training research. Amazing. And three, two, one, it's officially been a year in lockdown, Daniel. Woo! Hey guys, welcome to the Push Four Legs podcast with myself, Damik. And me, Tom. It's going on, That's seriously depressing, isn't it? That is, it is depressing. seriously depressing, yeah. A year of our life, of our young lives, has been spent. <laughs> young lives. That. Well, look, I suppose we're still, we're still here, right? I suppose that's probably some people don't have that luxury, but... Um, what? It does yeah, feel a bit like it's been a very long time. I rem- I've seen all the memes come out today of Boris Johnson saying three weeks to flatten the curve. <laughs> oh, God, if only we knew now what we knew then. No. No, if only we knew then what we know now is probably what I'm going to say. Um, <laughs> yeah. Jesus, man. Like, it's it's been a tough year. I think, um, I said to Laura, that, like, I think it was yesterday, we were just... I think because we've had to just keep going, you don't realise just how exhausted you are. But like this summer, so many people need a holiday. So what do you do? Ban foreign holidays. That's right. Yeah. Ban foreign holidays. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, yeah. No, I feel people Just... haven't realized you're a day behind that the uh, the travel ban has been extended to the end of June. Am I right? Well, they reckon saying? on Monday, don't they? They, they reckon that's what's going to announce on Monday. I mean, if it's yeah. in the papers, it's true because the, they just leak all the papers. <laughs> um, but yeah, they reckon fi- up to five thousand pound fine for going abroad for I without mean, reasonable excuse. That is that is less than the ten years in prison that it was previously. True. I mean, true. You know, <laughs> if, if, whatever. If if there is such a draconian gov- measure, uh, measures it from a government, it is that they've reduced it from uh, t- a ten-year jail sentence to five grand. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> I mean, it would take some people that many, that many years to save up that sort of money, to be honest. I just, I just, I find it baffling. I just genuinely, like, I understand it. I understand to a certain point. I understand you don't want, like, another variant getting all this sort of shit. But 50% of the fucking country are vaccinated. And the, the most vulnerable people, like, we've done it in that order. And it's like, yeah. so if cases do rise and I have to stay in bed for a week with the flu, who cares? The weird one. Weren't we saying we were like, we, we thought we'd get to a point of like maybe when you get to the 50s or the 45 year olds are vaccinated, you're like, should we just open it up? The whole, like, the whole, the whole point. On? Yeah, that's the thing. The whole point of this is to protect the people who, is to, is to stop the uh, the intensive care beds getting filled up, right? And yeah. from all the data that they've had, those beds were being filled up by people between the age of 100 to 50, right? On a sliding scale of those, <laughs> that, are, those that are older, right? You went on the, uh, the top end first. I was like... Where's he going from 100? Is yeah, he going no, sorry, yeah. 100? I went down. I went down. Um, but no, only because well, that's the way that the vaccines were given, right? So those people who are more vulnerable have had more time to have the vaccine, right? All that sort of shit. So anyone below the age of 50 who is like medically needs it, right? Like my dad, for example, has already had his. He's over 50, so it doesn't, that is not a good example. But we, everyone's, everyone who's in danger of taking a hospital bed needing, needing that help has had it. Just let us get to the fuck on with our lives, right? And if I get it, right, and I get a bad dose of it and I have to stay in bed for a week, I stay in bed for a week. But then, do you know what? I'm probably going to have some sort of immunity, right? Great. Let me crack on my life again. I just, it baffles me. It just baffles me that they're still scared of it when the thing you're scared of, we have now hopefully remedied in, in the vaccine. And it's like, so what was the point of giving on a vaccine if you're going to lock everyone up again and stop them going abroad on holiday? What was the fucking point? What's the point? Weird, I just. I just, I, I understand, I understand, like, we got to this point, right, and I'm all that, whatever's been and gone, it's been and gone, but you're just fear-mongering now, scare-mongering, and just creating, like, you're just scared of it, and it's like, for what? Like, I don't, I just, I, I just don't understand it, like, so you're now vaccinating the whole co- country, and now what, we're still in lockdown, we're still going to have restrictions, what's the fucking point? Like, I don't get it, it really annoys me, do, as you can tell. Need- yeah, I can see. But we, we they're also the case of they, they need to do the, the second doses. I understand that most people, according to the data, will be already vaccinated from that first dosage. But you can't kind of, it's kind of a, as it's been, a blanket rule for yeah, But even right? from the second so, one, though, even from the second one, up to the 20th of May, which is when they were going to let people out on holiday, 
the majority of them are still going to have the second one by then. <laughs> I just all I the just old think, people anyway. All those old. All I just the old I just people. find it. I just find it baffling. I just just find it so weird. Oh, honest. but mate, like, mate, but just think we'll be we'll be out. Probably well, we sh- in theory should be safer in this country than a lot of the world. Yeah, we will, I suppose. But I just uh, there comes a point where I think uh, it's like uh, at what. Uh, at what point are you just controlling people for the sake of controlling people? Because you can. Like, at what point is it just about? Well, we see, we saw what happened in Bristol, <laughs> down the road from you, mate. Where were you? I was in Bristol. Where were you? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I just like, I just, I don't know, man. I'm just getting really frustrated with it because it. I don't like the whole conspiracy theories and all this sort of shit. And obviously, COVID is real. I'm not a fucking idiot. But to the <laughs> point where you kind of have to ask the questions, like why are they why are they just taking away so many people's like freedoms and like all this sort of stuff when there's so much data suggesting it's probably not necessary i don't know i'm not getting into it it's a fitness podcast isn't it it's just it is a fitness podcast we're gonna move on from that mean um covid's still happening we're officially we did say it last week in two years we'll still be doing it we'll still be talking about it of course we will in 10 years um Isabel's going to have to learn about it in school and what was happening and why it was such a bad thing to happen. Um, so, yeah, last week, obviously, the gym shut down and then it was as of this time of recording, we had Boris coming on our screens and going, we have to stay at home. And then it was like, oh, new lockdown. Oh, this is new. This is weird. I don't really know what's happening. Should I wipe the door? Uh, <laughs> don't really do that now um, so yeah should I wear 10 masks where are all the masks oh no everybody's but at least mate at least we've got toilet paper all we can say yeah well, all the those people when, that fucking uh, <laughs> did that remember <laughs> fucking like, we uh, me and Chloe were quite like yeah we already ordered like two tw- we literally purchased a 12 roll but each like like a week before as well and we were like we're pretty good nice no need for that it was weird yeah, though, wasn't that. it? Because like you, we went. And I remember going into Waitrose and it like all the meat was gone, like everything was gone. We're like, uh, so this is just strange. Um, it just it's just brought out the worst in humankind. And I think that the, the thing that topped it off, the thing that topped off this week was again. I shared it on my Instagram today, yesterday. Was you've got you've got political leaders in the EU and the UK, World Health Prop, and they're and they're like they're. They're, they're withholding vaccines from countries in, in yeah, some sort yeah. of political war. And you're like, they're just, they're, they're just awful people. Like, and that that, that's the thing that frustrates me is the people who are supposed to be leading these countries, they're just awful people. They are awful. Like, I don't think they genuinely care at all. <laughs> I just, it baffles me. And then like you got Pfizer, I think the company came out and were like, dear EU, you do realize if you start playing this game, the UK produce all the ingredients we need to make this vaccine, so they're just gonna, yeah. they're just going to not send it. <laughs> like, don't be so childish, basically. Oh, I just it's find a it fact awful. of like they, we need lots of countries working together to make these vaccines anyway. So that's the point. It's just like, oh, all right, okay. Um, anyway, we are what are we about ten, two weeks. We two weeks out from Easter. Yes, we are. We yep. are. We have been asked. Current, I think it was current. Our favourite, yeah, best Easter egg out there at the moment. Well, we don't know because not tried them yet. <laughs> How can we know? I can't. I can't remember what I had last year. Um, for me, I do. I still like a cream egg. I mean, they're very, very small now. Um, they might as well call them mini eggs now. Um, but I did they see get smaller, don't they? Yeah, ridiculous. I did see. What did I see? I tell you what I saw. Oh, M and S Dippy eggs. Right, I bought some for these on on the old Ocado shop. White chocolate oh. eggs filled with indulgent caramel ganache. Now is that, that not the, is that going to be similar to egg and spoon? Yeah, Hang on, but, it's, it is. <laughs> but more like a ganache thing. Yeah, yeah it comes good. in like a comes in a little box. See, I got some of them. But I also, you see, I just don't think you can go wrong with a lint bunny. I just think they're incredible. See, I was actually thinking today, like, I don't know whether I'm just, uh, I keep to my roots. I'm really, I'm actually cheap. Um, and I'm not a big fan. I like lint chocolate, but I'm not like, oh, this is the best. It's so nice. I'm not going to be like, I'm, 
hands down, rather have some Cadbury's any day that like over uh, over lint. I I don't actually like. So you know those lint things, like the balls with the, the truffle with the balls, stuff, the, the truffle with the stuff inside. I don't really like yeah. them. I'm not a big. I'm, they're okay, but I'm like. Mm, it's probably because you not put them in the fridge, mate. You need to put them in the fridge. They're Brilliant. better than. They're better Brilliant. than when they come out of the fridge. Brilliant. Brilliant. That'll be it. I don't know. I just. Uh, I think like, I had them as a kid, and I was like, I wasn't. I, my my taste buds weren't as refined as Daniel's. Clearly, living in you were up north, and uh, yeah. yeah, it was yeah, not not a big fan. But Mate, the chocolate like, I got when I was a kid was Kinnerton chocolate. So anything to upgrade <laughs> from that, fuck you now. That's Kinnerton, not Kinder, which is a very different story. No, Kinder's um, a good chocolate. Kinder's a great chocolate. Um, but I would go. Yeah, I'd get I'd get a massive Kinder egg. I'd be down for that. Um, but like Easter chocolate I've had already. I've been quite good this year. I'm normally the first person who's buying Easter eggs, like full size ones and just eating them as if it was like, I don't know. Yeah. I was, I was having like a, a, an orange on the way home and I'd eat the whole egg, um, essentially. Um, but because I haven't been working out, I felt like I don't really deserved it. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I've had my, like, I, I buy, I always buy like a pack of four or five cream eggs and get through them over the space of, you know, a couple of weeks. And that's my fix. I'm like, that's cool. I don't need any more. Yeah. Like once I've had them and then Easter, I literally just bought some stuff for Isabel and, and Laura for, for next weekend, but not going too crazy. Um, no, I'm, 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 I'm quite enjoying every now and again, if I pop into a, uh, a shop, I might pick up one of those little Maltesers bunnies or the, yeah. uh, or the Kit Kat bunnies. All those I'm all things. about the see. I'm all about those things, like the little eggs and stuff. I don't. I'm not little. as. I do like a good Easter egg, a big one, but I don't need loads of them. I think it's more the the other eggs. Like, those, yeah, like. the little weird things that come out. Like I, I think, I think, I feel like it's come with age as well. I like the little little yeah. treats, and it's just like, oh, yeah. I have a little bit of like that. The Oreo eggs, the Oreo eggs, yeah, the Oreo eggs. I've once. had a couple of those, yeah. and then you've got the Reese's egg, that kind of thing. Maybe so. If I were them, do that, like it would say, current best eggs at the moment. I'll get a selection of those little things and be like there you go like an advent calendar kind of thing and you'd be like yes. Bosh. there you go and the Reese's advent eggs calendar are perfect of, for that the Reese's eggs are great yeah so do something like that I would be like get a multi-pack of like because it's just like a little bit a little bit treat because if I feel like if I have the whole egg I'm going to I'm going to eat the whole egg like, yeah so and guys if you want to send us a selection of those eggs um, <laughs> just drop us a message we'll send you our address and we're happy to yeah. review them on the show and, and chat you yeah, out yeah we fine. can do that <laughs> no, i mean no. does that mean dan's basically that's me it just means dan wants to review some protein bars oh yeah, yeah I, mate I mean, I mean, should we have a little rundown of what we're meant to be talking about today? So, obviously, we, Easter eggs are covered. Uh, we've obviously got protein bars. Uh, Daniel wants to talk about somebody tearing their pectoral muscle. Um, yeah. And he announced all that <laughs> because he found it gross and he's six years old. Um, <laughs> um, I, I kind of want to talk about a little bit about single limb exercises and the body part split, just, just as a thing. Get annoyed, get annoyed by me. Um, I can so I can rant. Dan rants on his Instagram. I might. I think I'm gonna do an Instagram like 60 second thing on the body part split as well because it does fuck me off and I can't believe it's still a thing. All right, make sure you do um, it. On, make sure you do it on IGTV though for the old algorithm. Don't post it as a normal video. Oh Just god. That. Okay. Make it a minute and one seconds and post it on IGTV. <laughs> Noted. Um, all right, mate. Protein bars. Go on then. Go on then. Right. Right. We have uh, ordered from a ne- another company, but we are we ordered last week. I think a day after the show, didn't we? And yeah. uh, they haven't it's gone out yet. yet. So yeah, we we hopefully will be able to review from that company. And I did say on my Instagram they reposted it that we will review them. So, but these uh, the last two we have right from yes, yeah, so we've got another protein brownie. Box. We've got another protein brownie from Mountain Joe's. Uh, Mountain Joe's protein brownie. This one is chocolate. I mean, it is literally a chocolate it bar. Is. 14 grams of protein, 21 grams of carbs. I'm pretty sure that's pretty close to what's in a Mars bar with 12 grams of protein, <laughs> giving it 240 calories for a 60 gram bar. Now, yeah. 240 calories for 12 grams of protein is absolutely pointless. <laughs> it's not a protein bar, it's just a chocolate bar. 12 grams, that all. Oh. That's bad, isn't it? And then the other one we have is a CNP jam roly poly. I'm more interested about the taste more than anything else because if we look at that net, 
if we extrapolated those numbers out, 194 calories for 14 grams of protein, we can probably say it's not too fantastic. It'd probably get nearer the, if it was the same calorie content in the brownie, it would get to the 20, um, 20 grams of protein. So I guess per grammage, per calorie, it's better, but it's still not great. No. Like 14 that grams protein of protein. brownie is very, very good. Very, very good. Oh, the- <laughs> <laughs> but, but it should be, but it should be because it's, sh- it's just should a brownie. Be. Like it tastes like someone's tried to make a brownie and tried to make it slightly low calorie. And they've, d- oh, and they've really? succeeded compared to normal brownie, but it's not. It's got like it's the nice. bottom that's like almost stuck to the bottom of it. Yeah, it is oh, nice. Well. And it tastes. There's a bit of an aftertaste of protein, like the, the dryness of a protein bar that you get. But it is just a protein, like a, a brownie. It's, it's not. It's what it reminds me of, those Lodo brownie bars. If anyone's ever had one of those, a little bit more of a decadent version of that is what it tastes like. Um, it, t- it tastes nice. Like it's not bad, but it ain't winning no prizes because it's it's fourteen yeah, the, the, grams of protein I mean, or whatever. Twelve grams was, of protein. If if that was a good amount of protein, then that'd be probably up there because it tastes quite quite good. It's twelve grams of protein, but it's, it's twelve not, grams it's of protein. It's not a, it's not a protein bar. That's like the protein wheat mix. This one is before. jam roly poly. I mean, I've never seen this bar before in my life. <laughs> That's the point, Daniel. We're not no. gonna buy bars that everybody has. We're not gonna be like, "Hey guys, we're gonna do the review of our Mars bar." I don't know if you have one of these before. We're, we're given the um, we're, sh- we're shopping local. These random brands that we never heard of. So it does smell of a jam roly poly. So it smells of jam, which is nice. So I'm enjoying that, and it's got a nice little picture on it. Um, batch number, all that stuff. CNP professional or official CNP is their uh, Instagram handle. Um, it's all right. Packaging's basic, isn't it? But it's all right. It's all right. It's not going to win any awards. It's just no. um, <clears throat> it's just straight down the middle. I think what they, I think what companies have started to do is reduce the amount of protein because they've realised that's what makes it taste shit, and they've added in other stuff. So this has got 14 grams of protein, and you can kind of taste it's not as dry. It's not like got that protein bar texture, but it's just like a bit of a, it's a bit of a nothing bar to it. It's not anything. It's not really that tasty. You've got some crunchy bits in it. Texture's a bit different, but it's not, it's just a. It's not great. That's not great. No, I'm it's not, just I'm like not, a. Um, it's just a bar. That's all it is. That's a bar of jam roly poly. I'm going to have another bite of my, uh, Brownie, because yeah. the brownie's tasty. Right. <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you what. Here you go. Here you go. That's what I would say is I'd finish it, but I wouldn't buy another one. Mm. I wouldn't throw that away. There's, what was the one we had before we threw away? What was that one? It was just awful. I don't know. What, the one, oh. that, what, the one that had loads of... Um, I can't remember what it was now. Loads of protein. The 30 gram protein one. Yes, that one. Oh my God. Yeah. Yes. That I one just, was thrown away. Edited, that was I, like... just, I just edited the video for that and I, for a life, me could not remember the name of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, whereas like... that CMP one, I would, that CMP one, I, I would finish it and I just would be like, it was completely average and very, very forgettable. That very, very forgettable. Um, not worth it. This one, the chocolate one, does taste better. But the macros on it are even worse. Like, at least that one, you're saving yourself 50 calories compared to this one for more yeah. protein, by the way. But it does taste good, the protein, especially after having that one. And you're like, oh, that's actually quite mm. tasty. Yeah. It's still a bit dry, though, this pro- the brownie one. Obviously, it's got protein in it, but... <laughs> I think that's the case. Mm. Well, I'd finish them both, but I wouldn't buy any more of them. There you go. Yeah, that's a good I think review they're there. like... The, the jam roly poly does nothing for me. That's a three, two to three out of 10. The protein brownie, I would, I would sacrifice the calories. If basically, if I had another, what would it be? Another quarter of this, and that'd be the same yeah. calories as that, I'd still choose the, the protein brownie yeah. all day. Um, even for the yeah, last the, pro- protein. The, the, the chocolate brownie one is five and a half. The roly polies are three. Yeah. I'd have the chocolate brownie and then I would eat some dry protein powder instead of having the jam roly poly one. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yep, there you That's go. That's being a bit harsh. It's not bad. <laughs> it's just, just not great. Um, it's just not a fan. Also, I am a, I'm, it's completely biased that I'm a complete chocoholic. 
and anything that's a little bit more gooey and kind of virgin on, you know, like the, the rainbow cakes and all like the gummy mm. stuff. It's just really not me. So if, if you want to play straight back with me, give me some chocolate on it and then I'm probably going to like it. Whereas, yeah. yeah, this has got jam. I like jam. I like jam and porridge. Um, but yes, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not the one who's going to be picking up skills or like, what, what are the, I don't know, what other gummy ones? You like brown cheese fruit pastels and stuff like that, aren't you? You're not a man. I do. I do like yeah, them. Yeah, well, the gum drops. You like the drops, don't you? I feel like you're you're a person that likes the little drops. Jelly tots, yeah. Jelly tots, yeah. I like all I would, that stuff. Yeah, all that chocolate stuff. all day. Yeah, over candy. 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 <laughs> no, but yeah, chocolate, definitely. I think that's a family thing as well. We're all chocolate over sweets, as it were. Um, that's a good question. We have to do that. If you buy one of those big candy things with like the I don't know candy hearts and all that bull crap or the refreshers and the blackjacks and the what are the purple palm of violets oh palm of violets what a bad sweet that is who's buying them jesus oh, fun of them Definitely like fun of them. since the 1940s has anybody eaten any of those they're just you have like one you're like oh, jesus that is bad i doubt it, um, I doubt it. palm of violets let us know if um, you like palm violets, mm-hmm. and yeah, if you're if you you probably already had your vaccine. I'm not gonna lie, like, if you've had your, if you like palm violets, so <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> All right, mate. Um, someone tore their pectoral muscle. Oh yeah, so some guy was training with Larry Wheels. I don't know who it was, um, but he was I don't doing know who Larry a... Wheels. Is, by the way. Oh, Larry Wills is just like a big um, American bodybuilder, I think. It was big shared American. on... Round it down. <laughs> yeah, fair point. <laughs> it was shared on the form police's page. I don't know if it was shared as a um, as an actual video or on the on the DM, on the, the stories. I can't remember. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's not up there now. Um, but yeah, basically what happened was... Um, he was training with um, with I was, and he's gone down for a big old bench press. I think he's trying to do one rep max. Must have been three or four plates on each side. And he's come down as he's come down. He got to about the point where there's the most tension on your pec, and then it's just completely torn off his arm, and it's almost like rolled up into his chest. And as he's crawled under it, and Larry's obviously taking the bar off at this point, and he's screaming and all this sort of stuff. And I've had a few conversations with people about it, and. My very limited knowledge, this is as well, of, of lifting heavy weights, <laughs> for one. Uh, but no, it's like, obviously of, as a bodybuilder. You bench press. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as a bodybuilder, obviously you don't need to be training like one rep max, two rep max. You don't need to be trying that. It's just ego. It's just ego as, as, a, as a bodybuilder. Yeah. Right? But I had a few people message and they were sort of saying, oh, you know, that's, that's a good example of why you shouldn't rush back into the gym when you go. And not, not saying that's what he did, but when you go back and don't be lifting, don't don't be doing more at maxes and all this sort of stuff. You need to way into it. And I was like, well, yeah, it's a point. There's that. But I was like, people also forget. And again, this is my limited knowledge, but I'm pretty sure that when it comes to steroid use, which these guys are clearly doing right, is, um, is that they, they forget or people forget that with steroids, your muscles get bigger and stronger, but your tendons and your joints don't necessarily do, like increase the strength at the same rate. And a lot of people find this with, with bodybuilding stuff is that they get injured more frequently. It's why they say tend to do higher volume stuff and less tension and less really, really heavy loading and more lower rep range work. Um, because they find that their, their tendons, they get tendonitis more, they get joint problems um, because everything else grows at a cr- at much, much quicker rate. This is my, from what I know, I don't, I could be wrong. And if anyone's a steroid genius, let me know. But from what I can tell them, what I know about it, but also from people who I know in the industry who talk about this sort of stuff is that this is why they, they talk about recovery and why they talk about being enhanced and why you shouldn't actually grow as quickly as possible within reason there should be a point of it where you go right you need to make sure that everything else catches up so it could just be actually that there was just he's just grown too much too much too quickly and his tendons just couldn't take the amount of, of load that was going through his muscles probably could but at some point something's got to give and it's the weakest thing that's going to give at any one point and that's what was weakest on there as a tendon and you people seem to forget that i think with this sort of thing is that the thing with steroid use at that level is it's not about how quickly your muscles can catch up sometimes is how quickly your body can catch up with everything. Um, 
and that's what I, I wonder if that's what happened there or if it was poor warming up and stuff like that but it does seem to me that you see a lot of these sort of more these injuries in big ass bodybuilders that lift a lot of weight right and it's kind of like is it the weight or is it the fact that they're trying to grow too much too quick uh, and not thinking about the physiology behind obviously muscle growth but not only that the other components of muscle that are more for example your tendon is more like ligament and that sort of concentrated thing and the reason that in football when he's talking football that tendon injuries are such a problem was that they don't get the same amount of blood flow as muscle does because it's not got as much muscle belly it's got a lot more of that like fibrous tissue um because it's it, it's it, like with the achilles for example that's what provides that that spring and that elasticity is that it, it's that much stored energy in it that it can it can explode quicker it's not necessarily your muscles that are that quick sometimes it's the achilles tendon as well um and it's why that's such a dangerous place to get injured because it takes so long to recover because it has such a, a reduced blood flow. Um, same thing with that sort of thing. It's, it's, it's an issue that, that crops up time and time again. Um, yeah, that was just what I wanted to say about it really was <laughs> when you go back into the gym, it's not necessarily the fact that you're more likely to get that sort of injury straight away. Yeah. My point of view, we're going back into the gym is like, yes, DOMS happens and you recover from DOMS within three or four weeks. You might not get DOMS as bad. That does not mean your joints and your tendons won't be like fully recovered at that, at that, that speed. They will, they will take weeks and months to catch up to the rest of your body. Um, and it's why I wouldn't encourage you to go straight back in and after four weeks, be like, right, I can lift heavy loads again. Now it's like, no, your back, your knees, your shoulders, your hips, your elbows will all take longer to adapt to the new weights than your muscles will. Um, so if you've not been lifting really, really heavy weights at home and you've just been doing pump stuff and using bands or lighter dumbbells or single leg work, do not jump back in doing back squat with a barbell and then four weeks, I think you should try and go for your three, four, five, even eight rep max because your joints and your back, your body will not be used to that loading after four weeks of doing it and increasing it over time. That's what I was going to say is your body has loads of elements to it that need to recover. Do not assume that because you don't get really, really bad doms and you can't walk anymore and you can walk now, rather than the first week you couldn't, that your body is now somehow able to deal with that load. It's not. Yeah. That's what I want to say. <laughs> It's interesting, isn't it? I think there's definitely plausibility. I've never really thought about it as well. Um, and I think coming from a place of, oh, I like training tendons, a lot of the bouncy and all that kind of crap that I do is about shoving energy. Well, a lot of the tra training we do is like shoving energy into a tendon to make it thicker, stronger, whatever. Mm -hmm. And maybe like, I would probably, I would, I would hazard a guess my tendons are probably bigger and stronger than my muscles in some respects <laughs> would be like, actually yeah. they can take a hell of a lot more. You train for it more, but you train yeah. for it more. Cause so you, you know what ten mm -hmm. how tendons work and what they're designed to do, which is short, short, snappy, quick movements, yeah. not slow, stretched, eccentric, like all the time. That's not how they're going to get stronger. Um, necessarily. That's how muscles get stronger and get thicker. And but bigger. it's also, um, but just you know. with, just with the, the plausibility of the, of taking on the the steroids, right? Being a being an enhanced athlete, and one would assume that the reason why this stuff works is that it's pumped into blood supply. I would say so, and that would be a good. I, I think. I mean, Dan, you probably know more about this because I don't even move in the bodybuilding world and like TUEs and all this kind of crap. Um, but you would assume that that happens because of that. But then you have two types of tendon, right? You have sheathed and unsheathed tendon. Um, and the most dominant one is going to be sheathed. Um, and it's found across the body. But there's going to be a limited, there's not like all gone, but there's a limited amount of blood supply to the tendon compared to the muscle. And that's just, you can physically see that. It's not red, right? So whereas the muscle is red, shock shock horror and then that guy does not get as much blood supply therefore will not probably not be as stimulated by whatever enhanced drug you are about to use um which therefore will make it lag behind any growth that it's happening um i i can i think there's a safe assumption to make um i would say so um so that's probably the issue so the sheath tendon this is probably the most the biggest one it has like a you have a fibrous tendon bit and then like a synovial sheath. So you've got fibrous tendon and it's covered in like with synovial fluid, like synovial sheath in the tendon. So that's, that's what kind of 
makes it sheathed and unsheathed. Um, but it kind of permits like where it's sort of stretched to, that kind of thing. So if anybody wants to know what's happening at a tendon, that's kind of what it does. But yeah, it's just, I'd, I'd say it's down to blood supply. Um, and if tendons could take it on, then they'd become thicker. But you're right, yeah, tendons are, they do, well, they're I think, designed I think, um, to absorb load and they're generally, they're fibrous, right? And like elastic and all that kind of yeah. bullshit. So that's the point. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And like you see it a lot in basketball players. Again, another thing that I'm interested in, but they get a lot of Achilles problems mm-hmm. and they take ages to come back from them. Ages and oh, ages yeah. and ages. And they, they're actually, or half the time when they get an injury, they're wishing it's calf, not Achilles. They're wishing it. And again, I've seen it in football. I've seen players get Achilles injuries and they're never the same player again. Never the same again. It just can't be recuperated as well as, as other, other injuries can. I'm sure, I'm sure um, Alex would probably be able to give you a much better idea yeah. of all this sort of stuff. Um, I know, like, yeah, in terms of like would, blood vessels oh, and but, stuff, they're only they're only they're only in certain parts of the tendon, as far as I know. Um, and whereas the muscle will have like it's just full of like essentially blood vessels and cell membrane, all that kind of stuff. So it's, it can get to kind of everywhere. And there's only like small insertion points because tendon does have a, a little bit of blood supply. It's not like a ligament where it's like fuck all. Mm. Um, yeah, it's just limited. It's just very very limited. Um, yeah. In certain points point as well. So, in, and the injury is going to be far worse. Yeah. yeah as, as shockingly. Um, but yeah, poor lad. Tony Pe- I've seen, I've not seen, I've seen the, the bicep one and like the ruptured bicep of it going ping and then yeah. recoiling back or like coming off that bit. It's like, ooh, it's not a nice thing to look at as well. Um, but yeah, on your point of going back into the gym. Um, yeah. I'd say don't give, don't scare monk the people, Daniel. Jesus. Um, <laughs> no, but, no, but I, I think it's important. To but remember. I think it's just to be, like... it's just to be aware of what you've been doing. Right. So just, just for an instance. So luckily um, I have actually trained in the gym the last like four weeks, only little bits, like one, one session a week, just because we've been filming in one. And um, I've like, done basically oh, as long as I've got a camera set up I'm alright um, felt very good but I didn't record anything so like, oh, all these other bodybuilders like yeah we're recording I'm like well I'm sorry I couldn't give a shit I'm going to bounce around and do stuff you have no idea what I'm doing um, I'm like that looks boring yeah good um, but yeah all I did was I did some back squats some split squats and so one of my sessions was pull ups some split squats and like some med ball slams. And then I went and did like a single arm press and that's it. And I was just like, that was, I did about four exercises each time, partly because I was knackered, but partly because I was just like, I know you have not trained under load for a long time. And I I was really like kind of meh with what was going on the weight as well. Like I did some reverse. I also did some landmine stuff. I was like, I'm going to do some reverse lunges with a landmine. Don't really know what I'm lifting. Just like, do this. Be fun. Um, just a, a little bit of variability. My adductor, for me, it's my adductors that get fucked, basically. I come out there screaming my adductors, and I know what also what I need to do when I go back is a shit ton of hamstring work. Because um, yeah. I've obviously done a lot more kind of sprinting and running and stuff, and it's just highlighted to me that, I would say I normally have quite strong hamstrings, but because I have not trained on the GHR and all that kind of stuff for kind of those high yeah. effort sprints, I'm just nowhere near where I need to be. Um, even like, so performing, the, if anybody, when people take the PT core, you'll probably see my face after a couple of the uh, hamstring sliders. I'm like, I'm like, Jesus, this is hard. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, how many reps am I going to do? <laughs> yeah, it's just simple stuff like that. I think that when, when I, don't, I don't want to scare monger people, obviously, like you say, but it is that point of when you go back to the gym, don't go in there and try military press standing up. Just take a half kneeling position, grab one dumbbell, do single arm press. Because you put your body, your whole body under much less pressure, but you still train your shoulder joint and movement through that range with a weight that it can handle. And you're not giving your body too much too much to, to stress about. Same with that, doing hamstring sliders instead of 
doing 100 kilo RDLs, probably a good place to start, right? Doing <laughs> single leg RDLs with 40 kilos, probably a better place to start than doing 100 kilo RDLs. Same Bulgarian split squats with 20 kilos in a goblet, better for you to do than to do 80 kilo front squats. Mm-hmm. It's about understanding the force generated on your body, but still getting a training response out of it. So going single leg, for example, is going to be a great way to reduce the load because you always reduce the load by more than half when you do that. You, you know, if you can back squat 120, you don't you don't split squat 60 straight away. Um, you know, you, you, you go to something near 40 or whatever. Um, and it's just important to remember that you probably are better off doing that because of the amount of load that has to go through your whole body to deal with that. And obviously there's caveats to certain exercises. All, there always is, but it's about using your brain and sort of making sure that you're aware that actually look a dumbbell reverse lunge right now with 20 kilos is a smarter movement for your body, for your knees, for everything than doing like forward lunges with a barbell on your back, right? It's things like that. It's just about understanding what you're trying to do. Um, yeah, and doing like cable curls, 20 rep bicep curls in, with one up with one cable with one hand is going to be better for you than trying to do five reps with a barbell curl. Little things like that. It's about using your brain for the first few weeks and, and planning a program whereby for the first sort of six weeks to get back in there, you think about these things so that when you do after those six weeks, your body will be like, right, I'm ready to back squat. I'm ready to do those bigger movements you want me to do. Um, stuff that to, to me and you would just come naturally when you're training or any good coach would come naturally to them when they're training for the, you know, they're, they're programming for their clients. It's just trying to remember that for yourself because people, you think you're, you're different. You think you're superhuman and you're not. Um, so yeah, that's the, I, I noticed it. I, uh, cause I got the pull-up bar in the garage put up and I did the first session back. I did like three sets of five or something like that. Next day, my elbows were like, Oh my <laughs> God, what the fuck have you just done? And it was, it's, it's cause I've not done it for so long. Um, and there's a lot of load, there's a lot of force, there's a lot of trauma going through there. And it's felt it straight away in my elbows. Didn't, not everyone else was fine. It was the elbows. And it's just remembering that, yeah, you're lifting up 78 kilos for five, you know, five or six reps and you haven't done that for a long time. And it's all on, all on, you know, your elbows pretty much at that point. So it's just highlighting it, you know? Wow. You got um, I, I went and did pull-ups and stuff, but I, I get it straight in my back. Like just wait, wait you, a minute, feel it, mate. But, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, well, yeah, no, my back was like, sore, but I mean, like, it was more <laughs> that dull ache. It was more that dull ache, you know, and you're like, like, so yeah, but as if it was, I thought you'd give me a nice segue there into um, into single limb training. Um, it was just something that I think it's just it's, it's something that we have to talk about, right? Because we we do a lot, I think it's a lot of single limb training, but it's something that I think both me, well, myself and Dan, and it's probably coaches that we talk to or like some of our stuff just start to resonate towards. Obviously, there's there's a lot of place for bilateral training. Um, mm. But what Dan said was just like, you, you can manipulate the load and maybe the stresses uh, on one particular limb can be kind of, I don't know, validate a little bit more because you're like, all right, I don't have to actually physically lift this crazy load, but I can still get that mm. stressing response on one limb. And even there, we're kind of like playing a ballpark figure. Maybe I'm getting a little bit more bang for my buck because we've got some sort of rotational or anti-rotational or anti-flexion or anti-extension element to something like that that we, we're not always aware of. And we probably don't have a lot of it when we're doing bilateral work. So there's definitely probably anti, there's probably more anti-flexion, anti-extension, but there's not as much anti-rotation because you're not one-sided there's no, nothing that going on but it just reminded me it was i kind of because um i was talking about symbol single limb exercises and i had to dig up one of the uh one of the papers that we reference a fair bit um it's by a chap called alex natara 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 n-a-t-e-r-a um if you want to go look it up it's pretty like it's it's just one of the papers that we like to when we talk about this stuff it's what we reference it'd be um the load comparison ratio in single and double leg movements and it's just it's basically saying um so the purpose of that study was when comparing prescribing loads um for single leg squats or jump movements there is a tendency to assume that the load will be half of what the athlete performs in a double leg um, movement. 
Whilst this is a reasonable starting point, the reality is that a single leg movement is more challenging and we cannot make this assumption, um, is basically what they've basically said the purpose of that study. And obviously that comes out as the conclusion. Um, the use of segmental analysis, evaluation loads, acting and above, blah, 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 around the hip joint, the single leg that helps to provide some logical understanding, exercise progression, relative intensities, and each of the amount of additional loading required to elicit the same levels of loading through the limbs. So it was a case of that assumption, right? So a single leg will be more challenging and taxing for that reason on the rest of the body for some sort of stability issue and all this kind of stuff, which is what we allude to. It's like, all right, we probably want to do some of that to get back into the gym instead of like, bosh, here's as much load as we can possibly do through one plane or just one movement, one, well, two, two joints, but all the way through it. And we can probably start to be like, all right, we're just going to load one joint, but we're going to have a combination of something that's helping it but it's going to be a little bit more challenging. And then don't go in and go, like we said before, right? If you can bench press two dumbbells that like your two forties, you ain't fucking doing one for your single arm, like one forty. It's not happening. <laughs> no chance. It's like when you're back squatting, right? It's like, all right, I can back squat. Yeah. So probably when I was powerlifting, my, my, my one RM was about 200. Like, fuck am I going to go straight into a hundred kilo rear foot elevated black squat something like that it's not happening like <laughs> it's just it's barbaric so it's being justified with those things and you can realize with the same response and same well i'm gonna say hardness that's not a good word stress difficulty yeah. <laughs> difficulty there you go i knew you're here for a reason um i was like who's this guy just watching me um <laughs> yeah, the same difficulty you can still create that response and that training response and not having to push as hard with load, um, which I hope it's breaking through, Daniel. We're getting more more inking into the into the PT industry that people realise that you don't always Slowly. just have to chuck more load on. You can do single limb stuff. Um, it takes twice as long with your clients as well. So yeah, it's great. You have to plan as much of a session um, <laughs> from a planning point of view. Probably have to pair it though, so because they get more rest on the other side as well. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think as well, the other thing with single limit, I think is not being afraid to um, understand that having rest between each leg can be, or each arm can be useful. I think there's a, sometimes if with Bulgarian squats, I recommend for, for clients, if they're working, say six, seven, eight reps each side, I would sort of say, look, do that, then do something else in the middle of that and then go back to the leg. Oh, yeah, because yeah. It, it can I, be I, really taxing. I make them do a little like 30 second, like wiggle, go walk off. If we're doing a big set, like I'd be like, wiggle, go walk off. Do maybe what would be your your increasing stretching of something like that? If we're trying to basically we're mobilizing and loading that joint, um, the chances are I'm going to throw in a mobility mobilizing joint exercise. Usually, if we're on a bench, that'd be like that kind of high duction hip stretchy pigeon thing um, on the bench, and they'd be loading through that, and then they'd crack onto the next one. You like you've got load, you've got stretch. And it will get that load again. So they've increased their range of motion as well. It's like bang for buck. But yeah, I, I totally get that. Because there's there's certainly um, the biggest one I see for that is is the Bulgarian split squats or like the isometric split squats, where I see coaches would be like they'd just go straight into the other side. And I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> That's madness. I was like, yeah, yeah, you do you do a split squat, but you realize that isn't a single limb exercise, right? What? Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the, the back leg's still working. Yeah, maybe we've got a 60 to 70, 30 split on it, but it's still on. <laughs> it, yeah. it totally depends on how much pressure you're shifting forwards and where that load's sitting. It's like, if if that leg is still touching the surface, it's still kind of on. Like, this hasn't switched off. You don't have switched off your glutes. Don't worry. They're not off. Don't happen. Um, so it's an interesting way because I, I talk about that in one of the courses of, of manipulating split squat of mm-hmm. how we going forwards big lean forward and I'm going that's probably more of a 70% to 30% and then I drift them all the way back to kind of just an up and down kind of motion and you're like I pr- say this is 50-50 I, I think I can feel my back leg and the quad where my back leg's in complete extension I think I can feel my quad just as much as I can on my front leg um, mm in my perspective. But they're like, why shouldn't be? I was like, why not? Why, why shouldn't it be that? 
well, who made the rules? I didn't realize it was like, well, I feel like that. No, no, no. no. <laughs> so I was talking about that. Um, but yeah, interesting. That moves us on to slightly body part splits, Dan. What's your opinion? Because I feel like obviously I'm with, 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 obviously I, I love my cohort and uh, obviously teaching the PT level threes and stuff like that. But it, it, there is a tendency and they'll learn more because they know more is coming. Um, but there is still the people who stop at level three, they're the issue, it seems. Or, the, or it's still, I feel like they've, the, the bodybuilding world has gotten smaller or is not as popular anymore. Um, and I hate the word functional training and people have used it to describe my training over the last three or four weeks. And I'm like, Oh, you, you're more of a functional coach. I was like, what? No. Mm. <laughs> what does that even mean? I still, get, I still get really annoyed seeing that word thrown around and I get, it really annoys me when I see people trying to sell programs when they use that word. I'm just like, Oh, shut the fuck up. You don't know <laughs> what that means. Um, yeah. Look, the body part split is still for me is, is completely useless. And for the majority of my clients, it will be as well. And I've really got a problem for PT wants to train that way. And they train six days a week and they want to do mm. you know, do it that way. That's fine. As long as people are aware it's not the most efficient way to train, but they still do it because they like it. I'm like, that's cool. I'm not going to have a go at you for that. Like some people like to just feel the pump in a certain muscle group. Yeah. My issues is with people who do it because the big guy does it and they actually don't understand that it's not a very efficient way of training. Um you know, we've talked about it so many times, but I just don't see the many benefits of doing it. I just don't see many benefits of it. Um, I understand like an arm day if you really want big arms, maybe like, but you can, you know, you might do like push pull legs, like upper lower arms, right? If you really wanted like bigger arms and stuff, like I'd still argue you could get the same volume in on a push and a pull day as you do arms, but some people like to do both together because it feels good. And, and my view of it is that you should only be doing a body part split on a day like that, like arms or shoulders or whatever, if you're doing at least five days a week and in the other four days, you've got all your volume covered where you need it to be, then it's, it's, it may have some benefit to it. Um, I think that the, the, the next thing in, in the bodybuilding world is the whole, like they do two body parts together now. So they'll do like quads and triceps so it's not yeah. quite like so you know they can like get, they can they've realized now that they need to get more volume in over a week and hit each muscle group twice but they don't want to give up their body parts because they love it they love <laughs> the it gives them i think with a pump so they do things like yeah like quads and and triceps hamstrings and back chest and delts or back and calves you know like they've started moving things around based on on their weak points and stuff like that. that's then that's that's the or was I think before COVID kicked off was probably the, the trend. Um, but yeah, I just, I just, I just think it's, I think it's boring for me. It's boring. I think, I, we, yeah, I've trained I've, that way. I've done it. I've done it. It's boring. Yeah, I don't, you know, I, I much prefer the way I train now, but. I mean, at best it's like archaic, right? Like it's just so outdated. And I agree with you. Like if you want, if you're a bodybuilder and that's your thing and that's what you're doing and that's how you're doing, it's like, then crack on then absolutely that's probably that is probably how you need to train i was like to hit your body parts and how you need to do it if you're not if you're a human an athlete like an everyday person which i'm assuming 99.9 percent .9 of the people who are listening or their clients are then there's just no need like it's like if you're doing that to one of your clients and you're going actually we're going to do chest day today you failed them straight out the bat like you fail them. It's like you're not providing yeah. best service, and I'd, and I hazard just be like, even like I've gone away from. I speak right now, so I've gone away from even like the push days and stuff like that. Like even the the people, I probably maximally like people who would train with me maybe train three to four times a week. I think that's the top end of what people train personally. I don't think a lot of other people really train that much more, and if they do, then then well done they're probably doing the body parts but um and i'm just like in my perspective i'm like i can kind of i quite happily train people's full body full body full body full body like the whole time obviously i'm doing it in a way like it'd be like cross-sectional or i'm thinking about like what we talked about a few weeks ago was like oh my, oh, my squats gonna go with like a, a vertical unilateral pull or something like that and it's like oh that's how i'm splitting stuff up and it's not completely ridiculous um but yeah it's weird isn't it 
I just it, it seems like it's resurfaced, but then I do feel yeah. like maybe it's because know, yeah. I've, I feel like I've, I've been talking I've, about it a little bit. I think that's probably it. Is you've been exposed to it a bit more. I think it's still there. Yeah. I think it's still really prevalent. I think we're just very lucky we don't train in gyms that that you see it that much. I think if you were to go into most regular pure gyms, people would be doing it chest day, back day, arm day yeah ab day do you know that's that's the way people train the vast majority of people do train that way and like mm. you said the, the 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 most i've ever put it up for any of my clients is push pull yeah. legs and then not many i've i don't think any of my clients are doing six days a week so it's push pull legs upper lower so that's I like I, would, I wouldn't the, even i wouldn't even yeah i would i don't think i'd even like i think i just i'd do both upper and lower every single time i don't think yeah, i'd be I've, like so today so we're doing yeah. legs i'd be like what? Why? What's yeah. Wrong so the other thing, the other thing that I've, the other thing that I've done is with people who do five days a week as well. Is the more common than push ball legs and stuff like that is I do upper lower, upper lower, upper. If they want to split those sorts of things up, because again, five days doing all that sort of stuff is is quite tough. But I think for for the majority of of general pot people, honestly, like it it's it's full body stuff. Like it is just the best way to go about. It's doing weird it. as well because just from just from a point of view, especially how. I, I guess how I believe that people should be training just for like life in general um, to be better people at what they do most of the time, either recreationally, better than Zeke, all this kind of stuff. If we tend to, obviously the upper lower split exists, the push ball leg split exists, it was built off this fucking podcast. Um, but if we, if we were to segment that so much and we'd be lying to ourselves if we didn't warm up our lower and upper body, like when we're doing our warm ups or something like that, we'd be absolutely like falsifying information if we didn't say that, like, all right, I'm still doing a back squat. But would there be a benefit of like getting my upper body a little bit warm to be able to lock that bar down like properly and engage what would be like your lat that's connected to probably a part of your pelvis? You're like, yeah probably that would be a great benefit i would strongly urge somebody to do that i think when you're doing a bench chest day if you're just going for some bench press or something like that are you not are you going to just completely just chill out on your legs like all right well mm. is a leg drive going to happen no 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 all right well it does but it's a full body push that kind of thing so all that stuff's in play so it just seems a little bit like yeah moronic to me to like settle that down i think it's my old age mate no, uh, it's catching up with me. Eventually, but I, I, look, it's it's, it's <laughs> just it's just facts, though, as well. Like it is full body. Like you still need certain elements of that. I think it's just. I think that scares people as well. Lower, they just yeah, yeah, they just you know they just you know, when they say things like they mean the um the, the emphasis of each day, I suppose, mm. um, rather than anything else. But because I always say yeah, I've had this yeah, discussion. So I had this discussion with a client as well. Like I had this discussion with a the client. They they sort of said oh that they were. They were starting to notice from the, I think they they usually move around a lot more, but they was they were sat down a lot more during the day, and they were like, "Oh, I'm, I'm finding that my lower back's getting a bit sore and tight. Have you got any good stretches for my lower back?" And I was like, "No." And they're like, "What do you mean?" I was like, "Well, <laughs> it's your whole body." I was like, "Mobility is to do with your whole body." I was like, "How often do you ever see someone with great hip mobility but shit shoulder mobility or shit shit posture?" I was like, it doesn't happen. I was like, "It's a whole body thing." And like, if you work on your shoulders, your thoracic spine everything like that you'll find your lower back will improve when your hip hip mobility improves all this sort of stuff so i was like you've got a full body mobility program there for you you've got it there do it every day twice a week twice a day and you will find you will start to improve your lower back not to do with training no exercises i need to give you you just need to move better your whole body needs to be better and you'll find your lower back will stop hurting and that's the thing people want that stretch for that muscle group or they want that exercise for their biceps it's like get stronger Get, I, have you ever seen anyone with big arms that hasn't hasn't got big shoulders big chest big legs actually it's a lie <laughs> I mean, not big legs but do you know what i mean like it's it's like they're just bigger they're big they've got bigger backs they've got bigger it's and it's the one thing i wish someone had slapped into me when i was a lot younger because yeah. i wasted far too long worrying about a body part split and body parts and getting bigger arms and getting bigger this and do you know what everything got bigger and i think someone should have said just train hard train heavy eat enough food i spent far too long when i was younger cutting calories and not eating it. I should have just fucking gone for it. Gung ho. We're like eating loads of food and, 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 you know, it would have been easier now, but, um, it's, it's just, that sort of element to it. I think those, obviously I, I, they might've been taking steroids, but you look at those, some of those beasts that are training the NFL beasts. 
and like they train all of this like cross-sectional body uh, full you body they're, going they're sprinting <laughs> oh, they're yeah, sprinting that. they're doing plyos they're doing all this kind of movement jazz and all the bodybuilders are going no they, we can't do that we'll take away from my gains yeah I'm sorry have you seen that lad <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like yeah no it doesn't it, exist it's it's that it enhances yeah. you surely um and you can yeah, move you know, and it, but it's it's hard to get that through to people. Um, it really I'm not, is. I I'm think not talking the, like, like the, the top, 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 top bodybuilders, but like the people who are kind of just want to be like that thing. Oh, no, that will detriment to my gains. It's like, fucking no one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? It's, um, it's people don't realize. And look, we're all naive to things. We're all naive to it. Like mm. none, of us are, none of us are perfect, but it's... Um, well, I remember when I was younger, I used to think... Like some of those NFL players, they're on they're on steroids. Like, of course they were. Some they of them, were on. some of them are fucking are fucking crazy. But it's 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 more. I think it's that unrealistic. I never knew how unrealistic it was. I used to think, oh, it was possible. Uh, it's not. It's not, <laughs> not without steroids. It's not always possible, is it? So, yeah. It's, it's tough. It's tough to it's tough to take. But you know what? It's um like you said. I think if you train for strength, speed, power, uh, you know all that sort of stuff, and you you move around a lot, and you can eat more calories for it. You'll you'll get a better physique. I, I just wish fun. more people spent. I wish more people spent more time focused on improving lift strength numbers, and alongside it, ate plenty of food, and they'd realise that they can actually really get quite big, um, rather than just constantly worrying about dieting all the time. Most people just go mm. four weeks on, four weeks off, and just do that thing. Whereas actually, no one really tracks calories to maintain their weight and just focus on performance. Like I'm trying to get this into like a lot of my clients at the moment is like when you're back in the gym you're not going to be trying to lose weight. We're trying to make sure that you maintain your body comp whilst getting stronger and eating more calories. And you'll be amazed come next time you diet, how much easier it's going to be when you only need four or five weeks and then you go back to eating more. It's loads more fun. It's loads more fucking fun eating more food and getting stronger. I promise you. Um, yeah. Like, you know, it's, it's that whole thing of people can't wait to diet. And it's like, no, it's because you fuck up the gaining element of it because you don't, you don't focus on what you need to focus on. Um, I don't know, a bit of a tangent, but it's that's what all these guys are doing. Like all these American footballers, all these bodybuilders, they spend more time in a surplus of calories than they do in a deficit. That's how you grow. If you spend majority of your lifetime eating more food and growing, you will look better for it. That's the reality of it. Um, I'm guilty of that. That's one of the biggest mistakes I made. I should have spent more time eating fuckloads of food and training hard. That'd be fun. Gyms are open soon, so we're good. Maybe soon, yeah. Maybe soon. I'll just go for it. Fuck it. Just get a fat dad bod. <laughs> then cut down for a photo shoot and do one of those do one of those photos where you go uh, the before uh, picture and then like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. Nice. All right, we will we will wrap there, my friend. As, uh, my, wrap it up. My, 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 my batteries. It's getting low. Your battery's gonna go. Oh no. It's not gonna go. It's we're, did we're, bring we're his cable, did he? Again. I did. I brought my cable, but it's uh it's, it can't fit into the plug I'm nearest to because of a, a, a oddly, oddly placed shelf. Um, you know about that kind of random crap, Daniel. So, yeah. Oddly oh, placed furniture and stuff like that. <laughs> we won't go into that. Who puts, a, who puts a radiator in the middle of the wall? Do you know? Come on, it's in the wrong place. It needs to move that way a bit. Yeah, That's that's a story for another show, mate. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, check out Home Improvement Podcast. It's going to come out in the next couple of weeks. So, <laughs> <answer. laughs> all right, mate. Um, any other business? No, not from me. All right, if any of our cohort, we just started my protein cohort and our current cohort. We've got, we got cohorts coming out of our ears at the PTC. Um, well, we had people, everybody passed their level two, then do their level three in three weeks, two weeks, something like that. And then the My Protein Gang. We've got 10 special people um, selected from, I'm going to go 750, 800. I think they beat off wow. that much competition. Quite a rigorous uh, selection process. And their prize is to get taught by me and Luke um, for oh 11 my gosh, weeks. What a, <laughs> what, what a great surprise that is. I know, uh, awful shame. Um, so, yeah, we're going to. Maybe we'll yeah we'll we'll keep their track and see what they're doing because it's quite interesting. So go look at the my protein PT scheme because uh, we'll probably do some more um, and you might be selected. So crack on that. And if you're a part of that cohort, hey, you're probably sick of my voice already because you're listening to it nonstop on your videos. Mm. So lovely. <laughs> um, <Gym> unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, don't listen to my podcast if you're in one of my classes. 
So, yeah. <laughs> All right, mate. Um, thanks for listening, guys. And we will catch you next week. See you later.